Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jalen and I'm doing my first reading vlog. So yeah, it is Monday, November 30th. Thought I'd start with sharing what I'm currently reading and then kind of some books that are on the immediate TBR for December. Yeah, so let's get into it. So first is I'm a little bit more than halfway done with my reread of Otessa Moshfeg's Death in Her Hands, preparing for the eventual Moshfeg video. And I think I'm gonna do an individual book review of this now that I reread it. This has been such a rewarding reread for me, just seeing how cleverly Moshfeg constructed this narrative, kind of understanding more just how meta this book is. Yeah, I think this book is very mismarketed and based on what I've seen in reviews, people expected this to be more of like a, a mystery and kind of expected some kind of, you know, concrete resolution to the plot that is introduced. However, I think that's completely missing the point of this novel. And so I'll get into it more in the review, but I'm really enjoying my time rereading this one. Um, I'm also listening to this. I got the audiobook from my library and I really like the narration for it. The narrator is very like, she sounds like an old woman like Vesta and very like losing her marbles basically in her narration and her inflection and stuff. So I think it's a good narration if you're looking for an audiobook. However, I think this is best read in physical format just because, well, I don't know, maybe for me because I'm trying to like crack the code in this book, but yeah, you can't go wrong either way, but very good. Okay, so I'm also reading I Hold a Wolf by the Ears by Laura Vandenberg. This short story collection is absolutely incredible. I'm completely blown away. I think I only have three stories left, so I'll probably finish this tonight, but this is a very dark and often depressing collection. I just think they're so tightly crafted and you can just tell like when you're starting one of these stories that you're in the hands of like a masterful storyteller in terms of her pulling you into the narrative right away and you don't ever want to put it down until you finish the story and I think that's very important in the short story format. And the stories in this book are mostly focused on women you know going through some kind of usually traumatic experience in their lives and the way that they're coping with that or just moving through life in light of that and these are often very uh, creepy-ish stories and just very thought-provoking and a lot going on in each of them even when they're like very brief so um, loving this so much it's a very cohesive collection too and um, I, already, I already can highly recommend it okay and so a fun December project I'm working on for booktube is reading some of my favorite booktubers recommendations um, I reached out to a couple booktubers including CJ from CJ Reads, Hannah from Let's Talk About Books Baby, Kieran from Katie Books, and Grace from GK Reads, and Alex from Page You On, and this is the stack of recommendations that they gave me. The first one I have is CJ Recommended Parakeet, and I also saw Matthew Sharapa was talking about this book. Um, I think he said it was his favorite book of the year so far too, and Matthew, if you're watching this, I didn't ask you for a recommendation because I was a little bit scared uh, committing to a, a stack of like six books this month, so I'm including you in this recommendation. So what is this book about, you ask? Um, I'm not exactly sure. So it is... The week of her wedding, the bride is visited by a bird she recognizes as her dead grandmother because of the cornflower blue line beneath her eyes, her dubious expression, and the way she asks, what is the internet? And so I know this is supposed to be like a very weird novel, and I love weird stuff, so I don't know too much going into it. I just know it's been highly, highly praised, and it's weird, and so I think I'm going to like it. So thank you, CJ, for recommending. Next, I have Swimming in the Dark. Hannah recommended this one to me. I know that this one is like a gay love story that is sad because the main characters, I think they like grow apart due to like political differences or something, and so it should be interesting. Yeah, love a good gay sad story. Okay, next I have All the Birds Singing by Evie Wilde, which was recommended by Grace from GK Reads. This one, from what I know, no, it's about a woman who is isolated in a cabin with her dog and I mean death in her hands vibes totally and I guess she starts to like weird stuff starts going on at the house and then she is like struggling with trauma in her past and so I mean very much like death in her hands so I'm assuming I'm gonna love it if it's anything like that book <laughs> oddly I love stories about isolated women dealing with trauma which I don't know why, but yeah, this is right up my alley. So excited for this. Okay, next I have Saga Volume 1. Um, this is recommended by Kieran from Katie Books, and this is a graphic novel. Yeah, I'm really excited. I've been having a hard time finding a graphic novel that I really like. Like the last few I've picked up, such as The Lolo Woods by Carmen Maria Machado and um, Fangs. That's not really a graphic novel, but by Sarah Anderson. I haven't really loved them, so I'm hoping I'll like this one. I got the first volume because I was afraid to commit to the full thing <laughs> for my December challenge, but um, yeah, super excited. Definitely something I wouldn't normally pick up, so thanks, Kieran. Finally, Alex from A Page You On recommended 
Why can't I hold the book? Eleanor Ferrante, the lying wife of adult. I am very excited to get into Ferrante because she's like all the rage um, from Alex and various booktubers. And I have never read her stuff before. And so I heard this is a really good one. I've seen only like insanely, insanely, insanely good reviews for it. I know it's like a coming of age novel about a woman who, let's see, Giovanna's pretty face has changed. It's turning into the face of an ugly, spiteful adolescent, but is she seeing things as they really are? Where must she look to find her true reflection in a life she can claim as her own? I'm excited to see like what her writing style is and see what all the hype is and ready for the Italian vibes. Those are books that I'm planning to read in December. I was going to commit to like a full, am I like bouncing this way too much? I'm so sorry. I'm not a vlogger apparently. I was going to commit to reading all those books like in one week, but whenever I try to commit to something like that, it just terrifies me and then there's other books I might want to pick up so I'm just afraid of like sticking to a list of books because I might lose my mind uh, even though I think I'm gonna like all these but I just am such a mood reader that I can't like just force myself to read something if I'm not completely 100% in it so happy Monday everyone I just had lunch and everything so I'm gonna get back to work and then I'm going to read some more Laura Vandenberg later exciting stuff peace okay workday is finished and I have some book mail that arrived which is exciting um the first one is a poetry collection I know shocker because in my anti TBR tag video. I talked about how I don't really, I can't really get into poetry, but Matthew Sharapa, he recommended I check out, um, he gave me like a list of recommendations, but I picked this one. It's called Finna by Nate Marshall. A poetry collection in which he is looking at black vernacular. It gives his definition of Finna. Um, can you see? Maybe. And then two picks influenced by CJ from CJ Reads. The first one being Tonight I'm Someone Else by Chelsea Hodson. And um, I had asked her for some recommendations of like essay collections or just the vibes of So Sad Today by Melissa Broder and or Trick Mirror by Gila Tolentino. And this book was one of her recommendations. And the other one is another essay collection called I'll Tell You in Person by Chloe Caldwell. So yeah, oh, and then on Chloe Caldwell's book, um, Samantha Irby gave a blurb, which is you know, high praise in my book. So yeah, fun book mail arrived. Looking forward to reading those. Not sure if I'll get to them this month or maybe early next year. I'll probably read the poetry collection uh, soon because I really want to get into poetry. So I am going to work out and then we're getting dinner tonight from a local um, seafood place in Arizona. You think that might be kind of gross, but they do a really good job and have amazing, amazing food called Chula Seafood. So that is is the vibe for this fine Monday. Oh, her Christmas tree is up. I'll show it to you. Christmas tree reveal. <laughs> okay, wait, how do I turn this thing on? There she is. She's pretty, I love our tree. Oh, and to top it all off, Boston Terrier. Cause of this guy. Say hi, Preston. Oh. <laughs> He's saying hi to all of you. How sweet. <laughs> and then I don't know where my other dog is. Let's go, oh, there he is. Trekking through, trekking through. This is Cooper. Dog reveal. <laughs> friends it is now tuesday december 1st which is absolutely insane just thinking about like the start of the pandemic was in march like it feels like forever and a day ago but it also feels kind of like yesterday and i can't believe it's been one year of self-isolation i don't know it's just crazy reflecting on the absolute nightmare that was this year i mean like on a global level but also for me personally there were some sad things that happened and so it's hard to like think that everything's just going to get better in 2021 however i am hopeful with the election results and everything that things will hopefully look up from here but anyways self-reflection um i last night read another story of i hold a wolf by the ears i think it's an absolutely stunning collection i have two more stories so i will finish it tonight yeah so reading check-in nothing too much has changed but had a pretty good day, pretty chill Tuesday, nothing too crazy, but I'll check in when I have an update. Something just happened. What the? Hello everyone, it is Wednesday, 
December 2nd, <laughs> and I don't know why I forgot what date it was. Um, so last night I finished I Hold the Wolf by the Ears by Laura Vandenberg and absolutely blown the hell away. Like instant new favorite author, instant new favorite book. It's just, it's incredible. It's hard for me to even process kind of my thoughts on this book because this book is operating like in this really weird space of like being surreal while also grounded in reality for the most part and creating its own universe as a short story collection and grounding each of the stories in like very similar themes but each story kind of has its own life to it and I mean a lot of the stories involve women processing something usually grief or trauma or experiencing those things and navigating that space. I just really loved it. I'm gonna keep like processing my thoughts on this one because I think it's just so good. It's hard for me to think of another writer that feels like so in control and so every single sentence feels perfectly like crafted. I feel like she's very intentional with every single thing that she does in these short stories. I think that they're very creepy and often very shocking in every single story. The stories took many turns that I was not expecting such as someone in one story being kidnapped, another being a husband begins um, sedating his wife on, without her knowing. Just like crazy stuff goes on in these stories and they're often like very weird, but at the same time just so riveting and I don't know, I feel like I'm saying nonsense about this, but definitely check it out if you like short stories or if you wanna get into them. This is probably my favorite short story collection I've read this year. It's just phenomenal, 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 so good. So I'm doing like a book club situation with some booktubers on here for um, the new Elena Ferrante book. Very excited for it. And I think we're gonna do it in like a week or so. So I'm gonna prioritize this one next while I'm also finishing up my mosh bag reread. So exciting stuff in these parts. I just hit 85 books read this year, which is insane to me. <laughs> I can't believe that I've read that many books this year, but definitely next year, my goal will be to hit a hundred. And hopefully I'll pass it. I guess we'll see, but we'll update with thoughts once I make any sort of headway in it. Oh, and I forgot to mention that I actually have 70-ish pages left in this book, American Predator. It basically documents a serial killer named Israel Keys, who was very meticulous and random in his murdering of people. And he would often like plant kits throughout the United States. Um, he would like bury weapons and, and things to kill people with. And then he would, so he would go to a state, bury them, go back home to Alaska, live a seemingly normal life as a construction worker with a uh, daughter and a girlfriend. And then he would, you know, take trips and kill people at random. So they arrest him and he's confessing to the murders and he's kind of explaining his thought processes and why he is the way he is. And it's super creepy and it just makes me, I don't know, unnerved thinking that like I could be at the wrong place at the wrong time and subject to a serial killer just kidnapping me. And I don't know, he like rapes and kills his victims, both men and women. And it's just like insanely, insanely messed up and brutal. Um, but it's so riveting. Um, I put this down unintentionally as I was trying to finish up some other things, but um, this is really good as well. So I'll finish this this week um, when I have some time too. So yeah, recommend it. I don't really read true crime that often, but it is very, very good and well researched. And I mean, it seems like she had a lot of information, the, the author Maureen Callahan um, going into this and she, you know, puts it all concisely into this relatively brief book considering, you know, his history. So very good so far. Hi, checking in. I just picked up some beer from my favorite place, as I always talk about them in my videos. Ren House, you can see the sign. I got it's called Sheep's Crossing. Very pretty art on it. It's a oak fermented Doppelbach. Very excited because I do tend to like Doppelbachs, but I never have them. So yeah, excited about that. And then I picked up some Spellbinder which is like their signature IPA that just won an award. Great American Beer Festival 2020 Juicier Hazy IPA Gold Award winning beer. So it's always good to have some Spellbinder in the house, but just wanted to check in, add some beer content to the vlog. But yeah, I'm excited to dive into Elena Fronte when I have some time in about like an hour or two. So peace. Okay, so a chef in our neighborhood makes falafel and we got some, so I'm gonna open this. Here's a reveal. Oh yeah. Good morning, friends. It is Friday, December something. Not sure. My dog. Present, relax. He's always crying about nothing. I feel like this reading vlog, I haven't read that much and I'm 
I apologize for all of you that are looking for some insightful reading, I don't know, recommendations, reviews, whatever, but I have read some. Last night I finished American Predator, which I think is an excellent true crime book. Highly recommend it if you're at all interested in serial killers and um, just want like a good propulsive true crime book. I don't know, it's really good, I liked it. It was very like insane seeing that he would get like surgery in order to constrict his stomach so that he wouldn't be hungry for long periods of time so that he could drive for longer periods of time and so it's hinted that he was trying to make himself to be like the most to be, to be the best serial killer that there was i guess which is super insanely terrifying to me to read also i think the book really highlights the way that the fbi and law enforcement in general is often insufficient in prosecuting these cases and discovering evidence and also, you know, it's just seeing kind of like the bureaucracy of the FBI and the way that certain detectives kind of insert themselves and make problems with these investigations it was really interesting to see how it eventually ended up being that Israel Keys killed himself in jail. It's not really a spoiler, it's hinted. There's too many, you know, hands on deck trying to figure out, you know, finding bodies, figuring out if he was telling the truth or not in his confessions and everything. And yeah, it was just really really interesting. What this book hints at is that we don't even know how many people Israel Keys really killed. And that's due in part to, you know, his brilliance in being able to cover up evidence by like burning bodies or, you know, being very random in his killing or depositing their bodies in big bodies of water and, and you know, not really having any clear connection to these people. So that's terrifying. But also just knowing that there's very oftentimes limited ways in investigating these cases and just kind of like, yeah, the, the power struggle within, you know, law enforcement and the FBI and trying to be the one that cracks the case or being the one that gets the confession out of, out of the uh, suspect. It's really interesting to see how that plays out. I'm not a criminal lawyer, so I don't really understand fully how all that works, but the way she presented it, I thought it was really a bit shocking to see kind of how this case was handled. But um, I'm going to get back into the Ellen Ferrante book. I read 30 pages of it so far and I'm really liking it. Um, what I really enjoy so far is that it's presenting this like mystery in terms of, so the main character, she overhears her father, she's like 12 or 13, and her father says that she is becoming like Aunt Vittoria, and she equates this to becoming ugly. And it's unclear whether the dad is saying that she's becoming like her in some other way, or if the narrator is basically like projecting ugliness onto that accusation that she's becoming like Aunt Victoria. That's my understanding so far. And so it's interesting to see kind of Elena Fronte developing this mystery of like who Aunt Victoria was, and also seeing, you know, a young teenager reckoning with trying to find herself and wanting approval from her parents that she's always seemed to have, and being a bit unsure, because that's a very, you know, developmental age, I guess. And so, yeah, I'm liking it. Sorry for all the dog noises. They're running back and forth for no reason. It's early in the morning, I don't understand. But yeah, so loving that. I have like two chapters left of the Otessa Moshfeg reread. Loving that too, of course. Yeah, I'm gonna make my coffee work and then it'll be the weekend. Oh, that meal I had last night, chef's kiss, amazing, phenomenal, so good. But yeah, so I'll show you my coffee setup. Next. So I got this espresso machine like right before the pandemic and it was the best decision that we ever made um, in terms of, you know, being terrified of leaving the house right away and I would have like died without espresso, I think. Um, we love caffeine dependency, but yeah, this thing's amazing. If anyone is interested in an espresso machine, this is a Profitech, I think 300 it's called, if I remember correctly. And then this grinder is called the Specialita. I don't know. My partner picked that out, so I don't know too much about it, but yeah, love it. It's pretty, I have like a mess of cups and a tamper and everything up here, but yeah, we love. Okay, side note, if there's anything that you wanna see in future reading vlogs, please let me know in the comments below because I'm just like winging it right now. <laughs> um, I'm not sure what you all might be interested in seeing in my day-to-day -day life, but yeah, if you have any requests, let me know. But this is fun, like shooting not in a sit-down format. I'm liking it, even though it's mostly the same, I guess. But um, yeah, let me know. Wednesday, I believe I'm doing a discussion with the book hotties, including CJ, Grace, Hannah and Kieran, so that'll be awesome. And so yeah, I'm excited. We will see. The group chat has been lit today. I highly recommend you check them all out if you haven't already. 
cannot talk about them enough. They're amazing, um, amazing content creators and people. They're very nice. So yeah, wholesome content for your Friday. So now that I'm off work, I think I'm just gonna read this. I, I'm on chapter five, rereading. Um, really, really digging this reread for sure. I'm gonna school everyone on why this book is amazing and many people are wrong. Their opinions are wrong. <laughs> just kidding. I'll do time lapse because those are weird. Oh my gosh, time lapses are just so weird because you can see like the of the breath, you know? So enjoy me breathing and reading for a couple of seconds. <laughs> Hello everyone, happy Saturday. Um, so we just feasted on that meal I just showed and it was exceptional. Um, so now I'm going to get back into the Elena Ferrante book. Um, we're discussing it on Wednesday, so I need to like hurry up and get through it. So I'm putting everything else on hold for a while and my reading companion will be this beer I picked up called Sonorosaurus. It's a double dry hopped, double India pale ale from Ren House. Very excited to see what this one's all about. Very cute dinosaur. So I guess we'll see. But I will check in tomorrow. I haven't done much reading today or yesterday, but hopefully I'll make a dent in the book. So I will check in later. Happy Monday, everyone. Um, I'm gonna end the vlog here and leave you with a cliffhanger as to my full thoughts on this book. I got to part four last night, which is like almost halfway-ish. And I can confidently say that this book is very, very, very good. Um, I think it's a really interesting reflection on the way that we kind of lose our innocence going into adulthood and you know, adopting the propensity to lie based on familial drama and perceptions and yeah it's really good and things are getting kind of messy and chaotic with the family and yeah there's some drama happening so really liking it i will have my full thoughts in some sort of video coming soon but yeah thank you for coming along on this reading vlog i hope you enjoyed it um it was fun to make so yeah until next time cheers oh my god i don't have a drink to cheers cheers <laughs>